If you're going to talk about the web, what makes the web the web? There's only one. It's the idea of a URL. It's the idea that whatever, wherever your document is, you give it one of these funny names that start with HTTP. The fact they start with HTTP colon means that they're actually part of the web, that, which, you know, which you get to with HTTP. You can look up with HTTP. But, and there are other parts of the web as well, which, and that's an uh, important property. But, so the, but, the, but the U in that is for universal. It means that whatever you've got, you must give it one of those names. And that's actually quite a big ask. Now, asking whatever piece of information you have on the planet or off it, you know, you should give, uh, be able to give a URL to it. And please, could they start HTTP? In other words, don't design HTTP2. Or, in fact, you know, or an SPDY or, what, or, an a, or a DAAP or... They don't, please just, you know, get, every, we've got people, everybody's got the software to be able to work with HTTP, so can you make them HTTP URLs? So, in a way, HTTP is important, too, because the fact we only have one protocol is useful, but it actually, if we, we do have HTTPS and we have FTP and, and the fact that we have several protocols isn't a disaster, but if we have several, two different sets of URL spaces, it would be a total disaster because you wouldn't be able to, people in our systems, would, when you put, uh, there's a place in each document hidden away in the, in the code, in the markup for each document, whenever there's a link, there's a little place where in there, if you do view source, you could try it one day if you're not a geek, you know, if you're a geek, you do it all the time, but if you look at a web page, there's a, web, there's a thing where you can say view source and you can look at the code behind that web page and in there behind each link you'll see this URL or where it goes. And in that place, it just fits a URL. You could, so if you had two ways of naming these things, it wouldn't work. So a really important part of keeping it one web is keeping everybody, getting everybody to use URLs. And there's a technical architecture group, at, that, uh, the, which is part of the, the consortium, which just spends a whole lot of time looking at people who are proposing, reinventing the web and inventing a new alternative for the URL and saying, you know what? Great idea, but it's really damaging to have two webs or three webs and trying to keep it back. And it always turns out that there are all the reasons that they think that it's important for them to have their own new numbering system, which is different and separate. Actually, you know, it's probably almost always they can use URLs at all. So it turns out that actually the HTTP, but we could change HTTP to HTTP2 and we'll, we'll, we'll evolve. We have been evolving HTTP. And we can have different protocols. We have different namespaces. And it's much less damage than introducing another URL space. And the way HTTP is designed, that's the protocol that allows computers to talk to each other, allows you one computer, your, your computer, to go say to another computer, uh, give me a document. It's designed so that when the document comes back, quite often it's an HTML document, it's a Hypertext Markup Language document, it doesn't have to be. It can be a PDF document, it can be all kinds of things, it can be plain text, it can be graphics, in all kinds of formats. We started off having GIF format graphics, and then somebody mentioned that they might have a patent on that and you might have to pay royalties. So quick as we could, we made portable network graphics, which was, not, which was royalty free. Uh, and better in some other reasons, but basically changing a new, adding a new graphics format is actually easy. So there are a whole bunch of things which are really easy. So one of the things about the way the web's built is there's this fundamental thing about it, that it's one web because it's got one, this one namespace. And apart from that, it's all flexibility and all, it's, it's all open for adding new things. It's okay to add new protocols. People added HTTPS because you couldn't make something secure by just adding security to HTTP. What you had to do is guarantee that the person making a link would, for, would force you to require a, a secure connection by putting HTTPS into the namespace. So that was a, so these, that, that, that things work. So there's, so, so if you like a hierarchy, and in fact there's lots of innovation which is happening all the time by people inventing, putting up new formats, putting up new, we've got new data form, formats for data like RDF, whole new world of linked data is exploding because there are new data formats and they're still pulled across using the HTTP protocol and these things still get URLs. Actually, we've taken the URL thing a little bit further. When we started, they were universal document identifiers and the whole system was a system of documents, but as they seem to work pretty well for documents, we've gone beyond that and we've actually started using them for things and people, planets ideas, concepts, relationships, and things like that. So, for example, this library, you could give a URL to. And that's the, so, and then when you, get, so we've had to actually change, cheat and change the HTTP protocol a bit so that when you fetch it, you don't get a document and your software realizes that it's not actually fetching a document because the library isn't a document. 
it's the thing, it's the place. So what happens is our HTTP comes back with a way, of, it's got a way of saying, actually, I'm not giving you what you asked for. I can't give you the contents of the library because it's not a doc in a sense, it's document contents. We've actually said, so we've philosophically said, now these things we can use to, to, to talk about anything philosophically. And that is the semantic web, and it's very exciting. But don't tell everybody, because they, they get put off by the fact that the word semantic is rather long. And so we're just concentrating on the fact that it's a useful way of, of integrating data about things like libraries. And so we're talking about the, the, the web. No, we're talking about the web of data and uh, linked data. And so what I talked about in the talk today is linked data. And I didn't say the word semantic. I don't think once did I. So, so, uh, so we didn't want to frighten uh, all these people, you know, all these uh, uh, legislators and politicians and things there. Uh, and, and of course, semantic's a terrible word because lots of people have got different, you know, use the words for different, different things. So that's where, so there's a whole lot of interesting things happening in that area uh, at WCC, and there's lots of interesting there are research happening on the dimension of that, but I'm not, that's not, but I'm not going to talk to you about that. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about web science, so web science is something, in this, there's this uh, document. Digital World in 2025. Uh, managed to, uh, it's amazing. It's, got, it, it, it's a great document because at various points it, it says, it notices things like talking about sort of the, the, the way that in 2025 the web's going to become this incredible mass collaboration space, which I think is actually really good vision for it and was originally the vision of the original web, but we've kind of got sidetracked. And it says, that said, we have yet no models for global economy dominated by mass collaboration, no models for social structures and behavior shaped primarily by mass collaboration, no models for politics and government based on mass collaboration. So in other words, we've got, we can make all this stuff, we don't understand it at all. Nobody has got models of it. You know, you might argue, well, you know, we've got that, uh, you know, that we've got models of the economy and things like that. You could try arguing that we've got models of the economy. Frankly, I'm a little bit suspicious that we do not have models of the economy. And actually, one of the reasons why we don't have models of the economy, it's been suggested, is that actually the economy is the web now. The reason that people invest in things is because people that they have talked to think it's a good idea. You know, actually, you know, people are investing in things for the craziest idea. Three reasons. One, of, you know, one reason they invest in things, I think, is because they've done an analysis of exactly how the company works, how the market works, and what the, is the value of a return on the investment is going to be. And I think that's an extremely rare case. <laughs> you know? And almost all the time they invest because somebody else thinks it's a good idea. And the, how do you find out that somebody else thinks it's a good idea? Because you'd see their Twitter. You no, because you've seen their blog, or because you've seen their email. And so the social network is incredibly connected to the, and the social network, is, not, is that a stable place? Do you want to invest in what the crowd of people out there are investing in? in fact, so I, so it, it, maybe it is that because we don't understand the way information propagates through humanity connected through technology, through, through the web, because we don't understand the web, so we don't understand the economy. 